stopping precipitated withdrawal is hard. And the reality is it's very difficult to stop. You either need to get back on an adequate dose of the previous opioid of choice, or, or you need to take an adequate amount of buprenorphine, of suboxone. Broadly speaking, precipitate withdrawal can happen with when taking suboxone too early or too soon, immediately after using another opioid like heroin, oxycodone, or fentanyl. But typically, uh, in current times, we talk about precipitate withdrawal most often when people are trying to get off of fentanyl and onto suboxone. So I'd imagine uh, most people who ask about precipitated withdrawal are actually trying to get off of fentanyl, right? And they're worried about precipitating. The first thing is that it's a partial opioid receptor activator, not a full opioid receptor activator. So it, I, I liken it to being lighter weight. It's not as heavy. It doesn't press down on the button. If you imagine the opioid receptor as a button that needs to be uh, pressed down to be activated, it doesn't press down as hard. So it doesn't activate it as hard. That's why it's actually a very safe medication. It's very hard to overdose on buprenorphine. Okay. The second thing to know is that buprenorphine is very sticky. It has high binding affinity to the opioid receptor. So it means it's going to stick preferentially to the opioid receptor over any other opioid, including okay. fentanyl, heroin, oxycodone. So when you think about all that, when you take suboxone or buprenorphine too early, immediately after someone doses with heroin or with uh, fentanyl or oxycodone, what happens is that that heroin molecule that's sitting on uh, the opioid receptor, it's going to get knocked off. It's going to be pushed off because that buprenorphine is stickier. It's going to want to stick and adhere to that opioid receptor. And when it sits there, remember, it doesn't weigh as much. It's a lighter weight. It doesn't activate it as much. All the millions and billions of opioid receptors in your system actually get a decrease in activation. So what happens when there's a decrease in activation? opioid withdrawal symptoms, you get sick. How to stop it? You need to undo the drop in activation, meaning some people will use their opioid of choice to reactivate all their opioid receptors, or they need a significantly large quantity of suboxone or buprenorphine to really activate all those opioid receptors and press down Precipitated withdrawal is different from regular opioid withdrawal, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it's, it's abrupt. Uh, it's, I liken it to uh, stepping, slamming on the brakes of a car. When you stop taking heroin and you just simply withdraw and let the heroin leave your system, you do get sick, you do get withdrawal, but it's not precipitated. It's just because buprenorphine is such a sticky molecule, it's going to knock off everything. Um, off, off of those opioid receptors. Whatever feels safest, right? If the patient doesn't have to contact us. If they're feeling terrible, go to the ER by all means. Okay. If they're feeling like they're about to go into precipitated withdrawal or they're able to kind of handle uh, the, the, the distress, the unpleasantness mm -hmm. of, of withdrawal, then please reach out, right? And um, a, a, the on-call provider or their own provider can work with them, offer maybe some comfort meds or offer guidance on how to right. dose their suboxone uh, to get out of uh, precipitated withdrawal. In terms of uh, avoiding precipitated withdrawal versus stopping mm -hmm. precipitated withdrawal, the, the evidence is actually... Um, not that strong. It's still, the research is still happening. The literature is still growing. And these studies are happening right now. But because of that, there's no standard of care on how to avoid precipitated withdrawal. Mm -hmm. 